Hello everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we're going to introduce the notion of NGRX selectors. So, as we have seen in the last lesson, our store service is also an observable of application state. It emits global application state values. So if you need some of the data inside the store, any data really, in some part of the application, you can always subscribe to your store service and get any data that you need. This will always work. You can also apply here any RxJS operator such as map and any other RxJS operator that you need in order to transform the data. So that is always possible. The data inside the store is always accessible this way. Now we are going to introduce a couple of optimizations that we can add to our application in order to make the querying of the data more efficient. So first let's remember that our application once it's completed is going to have a lot more of NGRX actions other than the login and the logout action. So we are going to have actions to load our list of courses, we are going to have actions to edit the course using the edit button, to delete a course using here the delete button, and also we are going to have an action for example for adding here a new course using here the add button. We will also have actions to load lessons here on the view course page etc. So there will be a series of actions dispatched by our application and with each action that gets dispatched there will be a new value emitted here by our store observable. With each new value emitted by the store observable there will be a new value for the is logged in observable as it's currently implemented using the map operator. Now in the case of observables such as for example is logged in this means that over time the user is going to be initially logged out then the user is going to be logged in so the observable is going to become true and after that with any other action that gets dispatched in the store, a new value is going to get emitted by the store and this value here is going to be recalculated each time. But as you can imagine, after the user has been logged in, this observable is always going to be emitting the same value which is true. So the user is still logged in when we load course data from the backend, when we delete a course etc. The value emitted by is logged in is not going to change. So in that case we would be continuously pushing here to the view using the async pipe the same value again and again and again. So here is logged in would be emitting multiple true values over time. Now we would like to optimize a bit the way that we report data changes to the view. We would like to make sure that these observables only emit new values if the value has changed since last time. So there is no point clearly in emitting to the view 10 times the same is logged in true value. We only want to report a new value to the view if the user authentication state has changed in the case of these two observables. So what we want here is essentially a duplicate elimination functionality. Now we could add here for example the distinct until changed RxJS operator that would do exactly that. But because this need for eliminating duplicate values is so common in NGRX. NGRX provides us with a custom operator that is not a core RxJS operator so this belongs to NGRX and this operator that does both mapping of values and elimination of duplicates is called the select operator. So if we check here the import of this select operator as we can see this is coming from NGRX slash store and not from RxJS. So this operator is what we're going to be using in order to derive data from our store. Now besides this optimization of removing duplicate values and preventing them from reaching the view each time, we are going to take this one step further. Even though we are removing duplicates with the select operator, this calculation here which takes the global application state and produces here a derived value, in this case the is logged in flag, this calculation is still going to be repeated each time that the store emits a new value. Now in in this case this calculation is very simple but there could be situations where the calculation is a bit more complex and consumes more resources. Now let's take this optimization one step further. This function that we have here inside the select operator is a pure mapping function. It takes an input and maps it to an output. Now this function if the input does not change then the output will also not change. So if we keep emitting the exact same value in the input we are going to 
continuously get the same mapped value in the output. Now what we would like to avoid is to compute this calculation again in case that the input has not changed. So it's another level of optimization that we are looking for here. We want to be able to perform this mapping operation for a given input and we want to keep the output of that mapping operation in memory. Then we are only going to perform the mapping again in case that the input changes. If the input remains the same across multiple values emitted by the store, then we are not going to repeat the calculation of the derived value. Instead, we are going to take a previously calculated value from an in-memory cache. So this notion of a mapping function with memory is known in NGRX as a selector. Let's then see what a selector looks like. We are going to go here to our authentication module and here we are going to create a new file. We are going to call it off.selectors.ts. So this file is going to contain multiple selectors that belong to the authentication module. Let's create then our first selector function. So we are going to define here a is logged in constant, which is going to be our selector. So this value will be a function. We can create mapping functions with memory very easily by using the create selector API from NGRX. Now this create selector function takes multiple arguments. We need a minimum two arguments to be passed to create selector. Now here we can add multiple mapping functions that we can use to select different parts of the store state. After selecting multiple parts of the store state, we are going to provide in the end a function known as a projector function that is going to give us the result of the is logged in selector. So a boolean flag informing us if the user is logged in or not. So let's start by adding here a mapping function that is going to fetch us the data that we need from the store. So the first argument of this function is going to be the global application state. And the output is going to be the slice of state from the store that we need. So in this case, we are going to be accessing the state and we are going to be accessing the off property. So we are doing something very similar to what we did here. We are accessing the global application state and taking only the authentication state. So we could also add here other functions that take different parts of the application state. Let's say, for example, that we would have some course data under a courses state property. If that would be the case, we could access that state by providing here a second mapping function. In our case, we really only need here to get access to the authentication state. So now we are ready to implement the final argument to our call to create selector, which is the projector function. So this function is going to take here all the slices of state that we have selected using this mapping function. So in this case, what we're going to receive here is the authentication state that was calculated by this mapping function. Let's then now implement our projector function. So here we are going to take the authentication state and we are going to access the user property. And just like we did before, we are going to negate these two times in order to produce here a is logged in boolean flag. So with this, we have defined here our first NGRX selector. This is a mapping function, very similar to this mapping function that we have used here, but unlike this plain mapping function, the one created using the create selector utility has memory. So as long as our input state object does not change, the output is not going to be recalculated. This type of function is known in functional programming terms as a memoized function function, meaning that it keeps memory of previous executions and only executes itself if the inputs of the function have not been calculated before. After each new execution of the function, the memoized function is going to keep in a memory cache specific to the function the results of each calculation. So in summary, it's a mapping function with memory. We can now take this function and we can use it here in place of this plain mapping function. We can now import here the is logged in selector pass it to the select operator and with this we have now obtained the same result that we were obtaining before but in an optimal way. The selector is only going to repeat the calculation of the output if the input changes and the select operator is going to remove any duplicates passed to the view. Let's now quickly implement our second selector, the is logged out selector and introduce a couple of more important concepts. So we are going to define here a new constant which is going to be called is logged out. 
normal and we are going to define it using again create selector now this time around instead of selecting here the authentication state we can use the create selector function to combine multiple selectors together so as we have seen we need to pass to create selector here a list of mapping functions well the is logged in selector function is also itself a mapping function so we can use it here and use create selectors to combine multiple selectors together let's now implement here the projector function so in our case this projector function only receives here a boolean flag that we are going to call logged in so this flag here is the result of applying here the is logged in selector to the store state and we are going to obtain the value of is logged out simply by negating the value of logged in so with this we now have here our second selector that we can pass here to the select operator and with this we have refactored the queries that we were doing to our view to use selectors instead of plain mapping functions let's now try this out and confirm that everything is working as expected we are going to refresh the application and we are going to inspect the content of the store so as you can see currently the store is empty going here to the login screen we are going to perform here a user login we are going to confirm that the authentication state is still filled in and we are going to confirm that indeed now we can only see here the logout button so as you can see the functionality remains unchanged we are still simply querying the store observable and obtaining a derived value that we are going to pass to the view but the difference is we are doing this in an optimal way avoiding unnecessary calculations via the use of selectors and preventing duplicate values from reaching the view using the select operator let's now continue to talk about selectors and introduce a new concept which is the notion of feature selectors